We belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Go within his gates giving thanks. Enter his courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries. May Jesus Christ be praised. Alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair. May Jesus Christ be praised. To God the Word on high, the host of angels cry. May Jesus Christ be praised. Let mortals to our praise their voice in hymns of praise. May Jesus Christ be praised. Be this while I quit my, my canticle divine. May Jesus Christ be praised. Be their eternal song through all the ages long. May Jesus Christ be praised. We groan in pain as we await the redemption of our bodies. Alleluia. I said I will be watchful of my ways. For fear I should sin with my tongue, I have oath put the curb on my lips. When the wicked man stands before me, I was stunned silent and still. His prosperity stirred my grief. My heart was burning within me. At the thought of it, the fire blazed up. And my tongue burst into speech. O oh Lord, you have shown me my end. How short is the length of my days. Now I know how fleeting is my life. You have given me a short span of days. My life is as nothing in your sight. A mere breath the man who stood so firm. A mere shadow, the man passing by. A mere breath, the riches he hoards, not knowing who will have them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Answer my 
prayer, O Lord. Let me not weep in vain, alleluia. And now, Lord, what is there to wait for? In you rests all my hope. Set me free from all my sin. Do not make me the taunt of the fool. I was silent, not opening my lips, because this was all your doing. Take away your scourge from me. I am crushed by the blows of your hand. You punish man's sins and correct him. Like the moth, you devour all the treasures. Mortal man is no more than a breath. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, turn your ear to my cry. Do not be deaf to my tears. In your house I am a passing guest, a pilgrim like all my fathers. Look away that I may breathe again before I depart to be no more. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I have put all my trust in God's never-failing mercy. Alleluia. Why do you boast of wickedness, you champion of evil? Burning ruin all day long. Your tongue like a sharpened razor, you master of deceit. You love evil more than good, lies more than truth. You love the destructive word, you tongue of deceit. For this God will destroy you and remove you forever. He will snatch you from your tent and uproot you from the land of the living. The just shall see and fear. They shall laugh and say, So this is the man who refused to take God as his stronghold. The trusted in the greatness of his wealth and grew powerful by his crimes. But I am like a growing olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever, Lord, for this is your doing. I will proclaim that your name is good in the presence of your friends. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God raised up Christ from the dead. Alleluia. So that all our faith and hope might be in God. Alleluia. From the book of Revelation. I, John, heard the Lord saying to me, To the presiding spirit of the church in Pergamum, write this. The one with the sharp, two-edged sword has this to say. I know you live in the very place where Satan's throne is erected, and I know you hold fast to my name and have not denied the faith you have in me, not even at the time when Antipas, my faithful witness, was martyred in your city where Satan has his home. Nevertheless, I hold a few matters against you, there are some among you who follow the teachings of Balaam, who instructed Balak to throw a stumbling block in the way of the Israelites by tempting them to eat food sacrificed to idols and to practice fornication. Yes, you too have those among you who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. 
Therefore, repent. If you do not, I will come to you soon and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Let him who has ears heed the Spirit's word to the churches. To the victor I will give the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone upon which is inscribed a new name to be known only by him who receives it. To the presiding spirit of the church in Thyatira, write this. The Son of God, whose eyes blaze like fire and whose feet gleam like polished brass, has this to say. I know your deeds, your love and faith and service, as well as your patient endurance. I know also that your efforts of recent times are greater than ever. Nevertheless, I hold this against you. You tolerate a Jezebel, that self-styled prophetess who seduces my servants by teaching them to practice lewdness and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I have given her a chance to repent, but she refuses to turn from her lewdness. I mean to cast her down on a bed of pain. Her companions in sin I will plunge into intense suffering unless they repent of their sins with her, and her children I will put to death. Thus shall all the churches come to know that I am the searcher of hearts and minds and that I will give each of you what your conduct deserves. And now I address myself to you others in Thyatira who do not uphold this teaching and know nothing of the so-called deep secrets of Satan. On you I place no further burden. In any case, hold fast to what you have until I come. To the one who wins the victory, who keeps to my ways until the end, I will give authority over the nations, the same authority I received from my Father. He shall rule them with a rod of iron and shatter them like crockery, and I will give him the morning star. Let him who has ears heed the Spirit's word to the churches. These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like flames of fire. I search the mind and the heart, and I will repay each one as his deeds deserve. Alleluia. Behold, I am coming soon, and I bring my reward with me, and I will repay each one as his deeds deserve. Alleluia. From a sermon by St. Leo the Great, Pope. My dear brethren, there is no doubt that the Son of God took our human nature into so close a union with himself that one and the same Christ is present, not only in the firstborn of all creation, but in all his saints as well. The head cannot be separated from the members, nor the members from the head. Not in this life, it is true, but only in eternity will God be all in all. Yet even now he dwells, whole and undivided, in his temple, the church. Such was his promise to us when he said, See, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And so all that the Son of God did and taught for the world's reconciliation is not for us simply a matter of past history. Here and now we experience his power at work among us. Born of a virgin mother by the action of the Holy Spirit, Christ keeps his church spotless and makes her fruitful by the inspiration of the same Spirit. In baptismal regeneration, she brings forth children for God beyond all numbering. These are the sons of whom it is written, They are born not of blood, 
nor of the desire of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. In Christ, Abraham's posterity is blessed, because in him the whole world receives the adoption of sons, and in him the patriarch becomes the father of all nations through the birth, not from human stock, but by faith, of the descendants that were promised to him. From every nation on earth, without exception, Christ forms a single flock of those he has sanctified, daily fulfilling the promise he once made. I have other sheep, not of this fold, whom it is also ordained that I shall lead, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Although it was primarily to Peter that he said, She is my sheep, yet the one Lord guides all pastors in the discharge of their office and leads to rich and fertile pastors all those who come to the rock. There is no counting the sheep who are nourished with this abundant love, and who are prepared to lay down their lives for the sake of the good shepherd who died for them. But it is not only the martyrs who share in his passion by their glorious courage. The same is true, by faith, of all who are born again in baptism. That is why we are to celebrate the Lord's Paschal sacrifice with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The leaven of our former malice is thrown out, and a new creature is filled and inebriated with the Lord himself. For the effect of our sharing in the body and blood of Christ is to change us into what we receive. As we have died with him, and have been buried and raised to life with him, so we bear him within us, both in body and in spirit, in everything we do. the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Alleluia. I shall look after my sheep and seek them out. I shall bring them out from among the peoples and lead them to pasture. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Alleluia. saw you, O God. You led your people through the sea. Alleluia. I cry aloud to God. Cry aloud to God that he may hear me. In the day of my distress I sought the Lord. My hands were raised at night without ceasing. My soul refused to be consoled. I remembered my God and I groaned. I pondered and my spirit fainted. You withheld sleep from my eyes. I was troubled, I could not speak. I thought of the days of long ago and remembered the years long past. At night I mused within my heart. I pondered and my spirit questioned. Will the Lord reject us forever? Will he show us his favor no more? Has his love vanished forever? Has his promise come to an end? Does God forget his mercy? Or in anger withhold his compassion? I said this is what causes my grief, that the way of the Most High has changed. I remember the deeds of the Lord. I remember your wonders of old. I muse on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your ways, O oh God, are holy. What God is great as our God. You are the God who works wonders. You showed your power among the people. Your strong arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God, 
The watchers saw you and tremble. The depths were moved with terror. The clouds poured down rain. The sky sent forth their voice. Your arrows flashed to and fro. Your thunder rolled round the sky. Your flashes lighted up the world. The earth was moved and trembled. When your way led through the sea, your path through the mighty waters, and no one saw your footprints, you guided your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The waters saw you, O oh God. You led your people through the sea. The Lord puts to death and raises to life. Alleluia. My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord. There is no rock like our God. Speak boastfully no longer, nor let arrogance issue from your mouth. For an all-knowing God is the Lord, a God who judges thee. The bows of the mighty are broken, while the tottering gird on strength. The well-fed hire themselves out for bread, while the hungry batten on spoil. The barren wife their seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. The Lord puts to death and gives life. He casts down to the nether world, he raises up again. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles, he also exalts. He raises the needy from the dust. From the ashes he lifts up the poor. To seat them with nobles and make a glorious throne their heritage. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He will guard the footsteps of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall perish in the darkness. For not by strength does man prevail, the Lord's foes shall be shattered. The Most High in heaven thunders, the Lord judges the ends of the earth. Now may he give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A light has dawned for the just. Joy has come to the upright of heart. Alleluia. The Lord is King, let earth rejoice. Let all the coastlands be glad. Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne justice and right. A fire prepares his path. It burns up his foes on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth trembles at the sight. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. All people see his glory. Let those who serve idols be ashamed. Those who boast of their worthless gods, 
All you spirits worship him. Zion, hear them is glad. The people of Judah rejoice because of your judgment, O Lord. For you indeed are the Lord, most high above all the earth, exalted far above all spirits. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the souls of his saints. He sets them free from the wicked. Light shines forth for the just, and joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice, you just in the Lord. Give glory to his holy name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Romans, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we are also to live with him. We know that Christ, once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no more power over him. His death was a death to sin, once for all. His life is life for God. In the same way, you must consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. risen from the tomb. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen from the tomb. Alleluia, alleluia. He hung upon the cross for us. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is risen from the tomb. Alleluia, Alleluia. God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son to save all who have faith in him and to give, him, give them eternal life. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, for love from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
By the gift of the Father, the risen Christ was seen by the apostles. Let us pray to the Father and say, Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. Give Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. Father of lights, today we offer you our thanks and praise for calling us into your marvelous light to receive your mercy. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. May the efforts of mankind to make the world more human be purified and strengthened by the power of your Spirit. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. May we be so dedicated to the service of others that the whole human family may become a pleasing sacrifice in your honor. Give Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. At the dawn of a new day, fill us with your mercy that the whole day may be a day of joy and praise. Give Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. For the homeless in the city, Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which to the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again. We earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the, mis the mysteries by which through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again. We earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith, we may possess in unending love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out and said, go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison. So they came back and reported, we found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching to the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard and from his, all his distress, he saved him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. Alleluia, 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 
Hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. This homily is going to be a little different because this is um, the first time for a daily mass, morning mass, I've done a uh, quasi-spontaneous homily. Um, I've done this for the evening mass before, but this will be the first time for this crowd. Um, I want to say, first of all, that there is a wonderful line in the first reading today, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Actually, it's in the responsorial psalm, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. So this is interesting. It's almost like we're supposed to meditate on God as if God has a flavor, <laughs> as if when we're tasting God, God has a certain sweetness, a certain flavor. And I'd like to maybe reflect on three different modes of thinking about this. First of all, the Eucharistic mode. So. Many of us probably remember our first communion. At my first communion, I was not very devout at all. <laughs> In fact, I, I think I remember what was very important to me on the day of my first communion is figuring out what the Eucharist tastes like um, <laughs> and, and being a little bit disappointed that it didn't, didn't really taste like anything. Um, but then I realized as I grew older that maybe the reason why it doesn't taste like anything has a reason, so that we can learn to go deeper and learn to taste the goodness of the Lord kind of in a spiritual sense that goes deeper than the physical taste, right? So the first way of tasting the goodness of the Lord for many of the saints and for us today is in receiving the Eucharist. Another way is in what we look forward to in heaven. So there's a principle in philosophy that says you can't give what you don't have, right? <laughs> you can't give what you don't have. Likewise, when God created the universe and God like gave forth the universe, there's nothing in the universe that didn't first come from God, right? So for example, if I'm looking out at this, this stained glass window out in the back, it is very bright this morning, <laughs> kind of uh, wonderfully painful to look at, but it's so beautiful, right? But it's part of this universe, this whole universe came from God and you can't give what you don't have, which means that all the beauty that we see in the universe came from God and therefore pre-exist in God, right? So which means that when we see God face to face in heaven, what will that be like? Well, think of all the beautiful things we've seen in the universe, <laughs> put it all together and then multiply it by infinity or something like that. <laughs> um, because you can't give what you don't have. So everything we see, Everything good in this universe that we see will some, in some sense pre-exist in God and we will experience in the vision of God. That includes taste. So if we can think of the, 
most delicious food we've ever had, right? Uh, you know, whatever your favorite food is, whatever that is, in some sense, God will taste better than that food because that food came from God, right? And you can't give what you don't have. And so whatever is good in that taste pre-exists in God. The third mode of um, considering that expression, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, is even just when we encounter a good thing in this universe. So, for example, suppose you enjoy a certain kind of food, you're tasting it, and you're tasting the goodness of the food, right? Um, let's, uh, let's suppose that this evening you'll come to dinner and you will taste the goodness of the food when you're eating dinner. In that sense, you are tasting the goodness of the Lord because all goodness comes from God, participates in God, and so even when we taste the goodness of food in this life, we are in some sense tasting the goodness of the Lord. So maybe that's something to think about this evening when we go to dinner and we taste the goodness of the food. We can think of that as a reminder. We are tasting the goodness of the Lord, goodness that came from the Lord. Let us now stand and bring our petitions to God. For the church, that during this Easter season she will grow in conformity to the power of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. For our political leaders, that they will make prudent decisions, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering, that they will receive consolation and peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faith of the departed, especially the, the souls of our loved ones who have died, let us pray to the Lord. For our benefactors and those resting here, let us pray to the Lord. The masses today are being offered for the repose of the souls of Cecilia Panas Anore and Lilia Dumaraus. For the repose of their souls, let us pray to the Lord. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call upon you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, 
we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvator, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. For those joining at a distance, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruinous souls.